Hello bookworms! Today I'm here to do the New York Times buy the book tag. I can't remember off the top of my head who created this tag, but I will leave a link down to the original video below, so if you want to check that out, you can. But I am going to just go ahead and get started. The first question is, what book is on your nightstand right now? So for this I actually have three things of reading material that are on my nightstand because I usually keep the book that I'm currently reading if it's not in my purse. So first I have Map of Fates by Maggie Hall. I only have like 30 pages left in this book and that's why it is still on my nightstand and I didn't finish it because I didn't want to have to carry it on the train and then carry another book with me. So I'm probably actually going to finish this like as soon as I finish filming this video. Then I have the Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier, and I am so excited to be reading this book. It came out today and I have been like just anticipating this basically forever and I already read like 150 pages in the book even though it just came out today like because that's how excited that I am. I I got the physical book but I actually ordered um, the ebook as well so that I could read it in the morning on my commute and I wouldn't have to wait until I got to work and the book got delivered and then all of that so. <laughs> That's why I've gotten to read so much of this today. Cassie, Melissa, and I are actually reading this book for the Spines with Wines book club, which we're going to be filming this Sunday. I'm not sure when this video is going to go up in relation to that, so hopefully it will still be this Sunday. If not, you can check back and look at it if we have already filmed it. But hopefully you'll be joining this. This is the conclusion to the Wrath and the Dawn series, and we're all just like so excited, and so far it's so good. And then lastly, I have this here Time magazine about Alexander Hamilton that I picked up during his birthday month. Um, I have not yet read it, which is why it's sitting on my night table because in case I just need something like on the shorter side to read, I will pick this up, but I just have not really had any downtime this month or last month because wedding planning. Next is what was the last truly great book that you read? And for me, it is Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I have been talking about how great this was like since I read it and I still haven't read Clockwork Princess and I was supposed to read it this month, but I got really busy reading arcs and stuff. So it's gonna have to be one of the first books that I read next month, um, but I am just in love with this series so far and I just know that I'm gonna love the third book no matter how painful it will be. So I'll find that out soon. <laughs> Next is if you could meet any writer dead or alive, who would it be and what would you want to know? So for me, that would have to be an alive writer and I would pick JK Rowling because I'm kind of obsessed with Harry Potter as you all definitely know by now. Um, and I honestly don't even know what I would ask her. Like that's just so crazy to have the opportunity to meet her. I think I would just be like, hi, I love you. Um, I don't, I can't imagine myself formulating like coherent sentences around her because she is a queen. Next is what books might we be surprised to find on your shelves? So for me, that would probably be nonfiction science books because I went through a phase like a couple of years ago where kind of, I guess in college where like I was just really interested in reading as much as I could about science, whether it was like theoretical physics or cosmology or um, biology, just like anything that I could get my hands on that would help me have a better understanding of the universe, which probably makes me a huge nerd, but I found it fascinating and I still do and I really haven't read any science books recently, but I kind of do want to read another one and kind of get back into it. Next is how do you organize your personal library? So for me, I am kind of all over the place with my organization because I do certain things certain ways, but I have a lot of different systems. So I have like, I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour soon. I swear. I promise it's coming. I was planning on filming it and then I ended up getting really sick and I was not able to do it because I couldn't even like speak without coughing. So I'm finally like getting better and that will be coming soon. But anyway, I do all of my like contemporary books, um, which are standalones as um, in, in rainbow order. So I have like one rainbow shelf. And then on the top of the shelf, I have my like favorite contemporary books. I have a Peter Pan shelf. I have two Harry Potter shelves, I have some classic books, I have children's books, and then I just have like lots of series and lots of fantasy and then like standalone books and they're just like a lot going on. So it's really 
too hard to explain in this video. And then I have separate shelves for uh, manga, and then I have two other shelves for graphic novels, and then I have another shelf for like adult fiction. The next one is a two-part question. So the first one is, what book have you always meant to read but haven't gotten around to yet? And for that, I have The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. This was in my video of 16 books that I want to read in 2016, so I swear I'm going to be doing it this year. I just haven't yet, and I need to. I need to make it a priority because the fourth one is also coming out this year, and obviously that means that I have a lot of catching up to do because these are not small books. They're actually pretty big. And then the other part of that question is anything you feel embarrassed that you haven't read yet. So for that, I have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I have no idea why I've never gotten into this one. I've heard people talk about it since I was in like junior high and I just never read it and I need to. Um, and I think this was actually also in my video of 16 books that I wanna read in 2016. So I'll link that video down below too. Next is disappointing, overrated, just not good. What book did you feel like you were supposed to like but didn't? And what was the last book that you can remember DNFing? Um, so for this, I am gonna go with Outlander, which I don't even have the copy on my shelves anymore. I think I left it um, at my parents' house because it's not a book that I uh, am ever going to finish. I read most of it. I read to page like 560 and stopped. I didn't like it and um, a lot of other people like love it and are obsessed with it, but I just couldn't get into it. It was definitely not for me and I've spoken about why before. Next is what kind of stories are you drawn to and which ones do you steer clear of? So for me, I am really, really attracted to fantasy stories and fairy tale retellings and contemporary books and sci-fi. So I have a pretty wide range of genres that I tend to read, though really the only thing that I can think of that I steer clear of is erotica. I feel like those books don't actually have like substance and it just doesn't appeal to me. Next is if you could require the president to read one book, what would it be? And I'm gonna cheat a little bit and say a series, and obviously that would be the Harry Potter series because I don't really want somebody making decisions for me unless they've read the Harry Potter series. I mean, I feel like that would be a good way to learn about politics at a young age and influence you about good and evil. So I think that, that should be like required reading for every president going forward. Next is what book do you plan to read next? And for me, that is The Raven King. I am so excited to read that one. I had to choose between reading that or reading The Rose and the Dagger. But like I said, Cassie, Melissa and I are doing Spines with Wines for The Rose and the Dagger. So it the choice was kind of like made for me, which was good because otherwise I probably would have spent more time trying to choose than actually reading either book because I would just be like, what do I do? So that problem has been solved. And also Amazon said yesterday that they shipped my copy of The Raven King and that I would be receiving it today. And then I get an email in the middle of the day today saying that um, it's delayed and I looked at it and it said that it would be expected to arrive like sometime at the end of May. Well, this is just unacceptable. So I canceled that order and I immediately ordered it from Barnes and Noble. So I should be getting it tomorrow now. So that is all of the questions for this tag. I thought that this was a really fun one. I used to read the New York Times like religiously, but I haven't really done that since I graduated college, which is probably bad, but I just spend more time reading other things. So anyway, I will tag anybody who has ever done a New York Times crossword puzzle in their lives because that's a fun, vague way to get other people involved in this. That is all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon with another one. Bye. Thank you.